Hey, what's up? My name is Tackless, and today we're going to be going over another boss fight tutorial video. Now, this is not going to be super exciting or flashy or anything like that, but this will give you important knowledge and details on how to make a generic uh, character into a boss fight with minimal coding required. Now, first, I want you to envision in your mind what you want your boss to be. Now, I'm not saying that I want you to think that it's, I don't know, like a Kraken or some crazy flying spaghetti monster. But I'm thinking, what, what what do you want your boss to be? Do you want your boss to be a mid of the game boss, an early, a late game? Do you want him to be fast? Do you want him to be slow? Do you want him to fly? Do you want him to, I don't know, do you want him to be invulnerable to any attack except range? Not a problem. We can rummage around that <clears throat> in the details of this dude's settings here. And we're also going to look at how to properly spawn a boss in because you could just have the boss sitting in the world the entire time, but um, for the sake of lag and so that you could in the future code a more aggressive boss, we're gonna show how to spawn him in on command. So first, to spawn in on command, we're gonna grab a logic cube, gonna put it in a flat area, flat is a little bit important here, and raise it above the ground just a little bit. And I'm also gonna rotate it so it's facing the path. Next, we're gonna go into the code or the brand of this and do when detect player. Now we're gonna make a child line of code. Make a new line of code, select the number, bump it to the right. Now this line of code won't activate until this line of code has been met. So we want this to happen once. Do create in world picker a guy at position. Center, because if you don't tell it to spawn in the center, it'll spawn it off on one of the sides of the block. Also, we want to do once, or you can make this a child line of code of this code, whichever. We want it to play effect. Poof. I like poof. Poof is never bad. There we go. And we also don't want to make this a jump scare. We want to give the uh, player a little bit of warning. So we're going to go into brain uh, sensors. I'm going to show the detect sensor. And we're going to scale this up. So now if, if the player gets anywhere within that sphere, the boss spawns. And I'm going to turn, no, it's not physics, it's brain. I'm going to turn this sensor back off so you can't see it. There we go. Now the problem is it will do some wonky things since he's already spawned into the world as a character. So we're going to go into our boss, edit him, properties, brain, template, true. Now he won't activate until he is created by this block. And if we wanted to, we could spawn as many of him as he wanted in and it wouldn't be a problem. As you can also see, I removed his sword and shield. You should go into code and equip fighter sword in code which equip is under objects items equipment equip so I'm gonna go over displaying health at a future tutorial so we're just gonna delete that so now let's really quickly give a run through on how this spawns now if you see my guy's not around here he's nowhere to be seen but as you slowly creep up, he appears. And then we can get to fighting. The important stuff of any boss fight. But what's more important is the settings of the boss so that he's a fun boss fight. So I've already tweaked his settings like crazy. So I'm gonna call in a clone, as you can see. I'm gonna have him look the same way and scale to same size. Oh, that was B. Let me do that again. Scale up. Now looks about right. We're going to rummage through this guy's code because his is default while his is all modified. So, edit. Now, first things first, the brain on the opening panel takes you directly to the character's brain. While if you go into properties and then hit brain, it takes you into <clears throat> settings related to the brain. They are different. Let's go into properties. Appearance, there's not much here. You want to leave your guy visible pretty much all the time. If you're going to be playing with his visibility, you should do that in code. 
Um, it would be cool, though. Sometimes, if you want to make him like a ghostly character, you could turn off his shadow. Next, we're going to go to movement. If you want him to be a fast boss, you want to bump his movement speed up. But I would not recommend bumping his movement speed up faster than the player's sprint. You can make it faster than his walking, but not faster than his sprint. If he's just always on top of the player, it's, it's just going to give your boss fight a bad feel. Next, you can go to jump, and this will change how many double, triple, quadruple jumps he gets in the air. Which, if you want to make him a jumpy boss, this is a fun thing to play with. Fly, um, unless you're making your character fly, don't worry about this. Uh, I've always wanted to make a boss that moves crazy fast in water, in a very watery environment, but I haven't gotten to that yet. I will, I will, I just haven't yet, but you can play with that there. Under advanced, ignore all this and let you know, unless you know what you're doing. Under combat, melee, light, medium, and heavy, these correspond to how much damage these tiles do in code which I believe most of these characters default to only doing light damage, but I'd really recommend throwing in some medium and heavy damage. I'd also recommend keeping light less than medium and medium less than heavy, unless you want to make all three the same amount of damage, in which case light would be terrifying more so than heavy because of how fast it hits. So really, the difference wouldn't be how much damage is inflicted, but how fast it's inflicted. Next, shoot. I'd really recommend turning down the shoot damage because 25 is excessive. Um, and then this is more details on shoot, but this is all can be modified in code, which I recommend. Throw, you're probably not going to have your guy throw anything, but 50 is way too much damage for throwing. Oh, it's still under combat. Health and defenses, um, I really recommend bumping up your boss's health, obviously, because you want him to survive more than five hits, and the players in Project Spark usually have combat heavily weighted toward them so they can spam attacks and deal out tons and tons and tons of damage crazy fast so you want to bump his health up now this health only goes to 1000 so if you need more health than that we'll be going over more details about health in a future tutorial next invulnerable this means that he will not take any damage or his health will not be reduced when he's hit by an attack and mortal means that he will have health reduced when he's hit by an attack but it will not go below one HP. So if you want a cutscene to happen when he's about to die, this is one way you can do it. Or you could, I don't know, choose to spare his life or not. Attackable, which allows your sword to make contact with him. Uh, really, well, make contact and inflict damage onto his health. This really needs to be on. Destroy on death. Um, if you want his corpse to sit in the world, or if you plan to revive him or anything like that, keep this turned on. Next, hit reactions. This is an important one. This is if he flinches when he takes a hit. And when he flinches, he then can't attack. And you can interrupt his attacks mid-swing if you hit a hit reaction. So I'd recommend turning these all off. Every last one of them. Now, if you want your guy to be vulnerable to ranged, turn this on. But otherwise, keep these off. Now, these do not affect how much damage he receives. This only affects if he flinches. But if he doesn't flinch when he takes a hit, that means that the player has to avoid him when he starts attacking the player. And team, don't mess with the team here. Just do that in code as well. Um, let's see. Sound, it always bumps up the range of the sound if you scale him up. And sometimes it makes this 1,000. Actually, it usually does. So if you scale up a character turn this off and scale this back down to like 20 or 30 and that's definitely all you need to do uh, let's see physics unless you know what you're doing don't play with this I've, as once again if you want to make a ghosty character you could turn collidable off and he could walk through walls and stuff like that and then brain this talks about what page the brain starts on um there are some cases where you don't want the brain to start on page one, but there's not many of those cases. Usually, if you don't want it to start on a page, you just insert a page in front of that. Touch priority, don't worry about that. Uh, template, we've gone over what template does. Power, leave power off. You want to play with power in code. <clears throat> Unless you have like a gateway or something and you always want the gate to be open, then you can do it here. Obviously, we want the brain to be on and sensors this goes over if it displays a different type of sensors and then you can modify how big they are or small so that's the basics of a boss and its settings 
you can take a normal bland character, play with the settings, and immediately make it a pretty decent boss without ever having to touch the code at all. It's a good idea to touch the code, but you don't have to. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I will be definitely making more boss fight videos in the future. Um, do you guys like the boss fight videos? Especially when I start getting into more flashy stuff like how to teleport and what kind of combos will do excruciating amounts of damage to the player because there are a few that are pretty terrifying. But I hope this was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching. I will see you.